Hello all, this is Vasavi from At Home Tuition. In this chapter, you have got to learn a few theorems about tangents and secants. But before going into the theorems, we should know clearly like what a circle, secant and tangent is. Uh, you have a circle, okay? The center, let me name it as O. So normally for a circle, you may have a center and from the center to any point on the circle, if you draw a line, that is called the radius, right? So this is the radius. So let me name this point as P. So OP is the radius of this circle and how much of a radius you draw on a circle, all are going to measure the same, okay? So from the center to any point on the circle, if you draw a line, that is the radius and they all measure the same. See, I have drawn a dotted line here. So from, oh, let me name it as uh, X and Y, okay? This line as X, Y. Now, O to X is the radius, R, we denote it by R. And uh, from O to Y, it is another radius, right? So this X, Y, the line which crosses through the center of a circle is called the diameter, okay? This line is called the diameter. Actually, diameter is a line which joins two points of the circle and the line passes through the center, okay? Then you call it a diameter. And in this, you see the length of the diameter is equal to R this side and R this side, right? So that is R plus R. That is, this is equal to 2R, twice the radius, okay? So from this, what can we conclude? The diameter is equal to twice the radius or you can also say that the radius is half of the diameter, right? So this is about the radius and the diameter and the relationship between the radius and diameter is that the diameter is twice the radius and the radius is half of the diameter. When you draw a line on a circle or near the circle, there are only three options you can have. One is that it may not touch the circle, right? So let me take these as line one, line two, and line three, okay? So when I draw three parallel lines, I can say either the uh, line may not touch the circle at all, okay? So it is an independent line standing outside the circle, right? L1 is the independent line standing outside the circle. And another chance is that your L2 where the line cuts the circle. So the line cuts the circle here at two points, say X and Y. So you find that the line is cutting the circle at two points x y and this line when it touches the circle at two points you call it a secant this is what is called secant there is another line here l3 this line touches the circle at only one point right so here just at one point it touches the circle so and this line is called the tangent. So any line touching the circle at one point you call it tangent and if a line touches the circle at two distinct point you call it a secant. Now I told you the tangent uh, is when a line touches the circle at one point. I can also explain, I can also say that tangent is a secant where the two distinct point x and y are at the same place okay they overlap they are x and y are here so tangent is also a secant but the end points meet at the same point i hope you understood the difference between a secant and tangent right so you can have i have drawn three lines in this circle one is a completely independent uh, line where it doesn't touch the circle at all l1 and the second line L2 cuts the circle at two distinct points X and Y and that line is called secant, okay? 
So a line cutting the circle at two end points, then you call that a secant. And finally you can have another chance is that the line may touch the circle at only one point and that line is called the tangent. And this point at which the tangent line touches the circle, you call it point of tangency. So in this chapter, in this chapter circles, we are mainly going to deal with the tangents and secants and their theorems. Okay. So for that, you should first know what a tangent and secant means. Now I have drawn a circle and I have drawn few uh, secants, right? All are secants because all touch the circle at two different points. It cuts the circle, right? So I can call this as secant line 1, secant line 2, okay, secant 3. I just name it as S1, S2, S3, S4 and S5. Now when you look at these secants, you can understand one thing. The S1 is the shortest secant, right? And as it goes further to the middle, the secant, the length of the secant increases and here, this is our center. At the center, okay, when the secant cuts the circle and it passes through the center, at that point, you see that the secant is the largest, right? It is the lengthiest secant. And again, when it goes towards the end, you see that the length of the secant keeps reducing, right? So, say for instance, if I draw a secant here, this is going to be even more smaller. Okay. As it comes to the. Sorry my line is not that straight. So here. When the secant goes towards the extremes of the circles. It keeps reducing in uh, its length. Okay. And you can see that. The secant which passes through the center. Is the lengthiest one. Okay. So you say that. This secant. S3 is the lengthiest one okay next what we have to see is now i have taken a circle here okay this is about the tangent and a point p is given on the circle okay you have the center here besides that you have a point on the circle okay i named it as p just try to draw as many tangent as possible passing through this point. First let me draw the lines which passes through the point uh, P, right? So I can draw any number of lines like, you know, like this. Okay, uh, I can draw any number of lines like this, okay? Provided it passes through point P. And one look at it, you can say that all the lines, actually I have drawn five lines here. Okay, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4 and line 5. You may find that all the lines except line 5 are secants, right? Because it touches the circle at two different points. And this L5 alone touches the circle at one point. And that would be the tangent. Right? So from this what do you infer? At a given point. At one particular point. Okay? Remember. At one particular point on a circle. You can have only one tangent. Okay? Okay? You can draw only one tangent at one particular point on a circle. Is that clear? And if you draw, if you try drawing many lines uh, which touches the P, they all would result in a secant, not a tangent. Here I have drawn uh, a circle and I have drawn few lines, few parallel lines. Okay, All these lines are parallel. When we draw such parallel lines, you can see that on a circle, um, you can have two only two tangents, okay? Tangent 1 on the both the extremes. 
and this is tangent 2 and all the rest would be the lines inside would be secant 1, secant 2 and secant 3. So uh, I'll just sum up what I have said so far. So I, I have just uh, mentioned all the points I discussed so far here. Here the line from the center to a point on a circle is the radius of the circle, right? This line is the radius and all the radii on a given circle measure the same, okay? And the radii is the plural form of radius, okay? Then the next thing you have learnt is about the diameter. The line passing through the center of a circle and join the two distinct points x and y uh, is, is the diameter of the circle, okay? And finally, we, I have mentioned the relationship between the radius and the diameter. The radius is half the diameter and the diameter is double the radius of the same circle, okay? Now, here about the secant and tangent, a line that intersects with the circle at exactly two points is called a secant, right? So it intersects the circle at two different distinct points and so it is the secant and a line which touches the circle at just one point is the tangent of the circle, understood? So this L3 is the tangent of the circle and a tangent is also a secant but wherein the end points coincide, okay? They just meet at one point. So that's why it, this secant has become a tangent, okay? And then we just discussed about the secant. When you draw too many secants on a same circle, you find that the middle one, which the, the secant which passes through the uh, center of the circle is the lengthiest of all, okay? And the other secants are shorter than the middle one. As it goes to the extreme, okay, of the circles on both the extremes, you see that the length of the secant is going down, okay? It is smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, at the end, at one point, it becomes a tangent, okay, on both the sides. At a given point on a circle, if you have a given point P, at that point, you can draw only one tangent. Just try drawing many lines touching the point P there and you find all the other lines are secant except for one line which is the tangent, okay? So at a given point, you can have only one tangent, okay? And finally, on a circle, among the parallel lines, only the lines on the two extremes are the tangents to the circle and all the lines in between are secants, okay? So when parallel lines are drawn on a circle, all but the two extreme lines are secant and those two extreme lines are tangents of the circle. So this is all you need. To, this is the basic of the tangent and secant. If you are clear with this, maybe we can go into the theorems in the coming videos. Till then, bye from Vasvi.